Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Jordan and today we're going to play a bit of Curse of the Dead Gods. Never heard of Curse of the Dead Gods before? Well, let me teach you all about it. So, Curse of the Dead Gods is a newly released indie roguelike made by Past Tech Games. In it, you play as Caradog McAllister, a 19th century English explorer. But this isn't your pip pip cheerio kind of English gentleman. This is a more let's shoot you in the face and stab you in the back kind of fella. The aim of the game is to enter the different temples, kill everything in front of you, avoid all the traps, stay in the light, bargain with the gods, and avoid the dreaded curses. Keep doing this until you make it all the way to the champions. These tough as nails bastards are your final hurdle. If you're good enough and you manage to put them down, then you'll be rewarded with a portal back to the main temple's entrance. Here you can spend the crystal skulls and jade rings you've collected to get yourself kick-ass blessings, shiny divine favours and make killer new weapons available, all with the aim of making your next run even easier. But what's that? The enemies are getting tougher? Well, you know what we're going to have to do about that, don't you? Shoot them in the face and stab them in the back. Let's be honest though, all we really need are our trusty old machete, our weebly revolver and of course our badass mutton chops. Can't keep me down for long, because I'm on my way into Tomb Raid this mother- Like what you see? Well, with that said, let's go ahead and enter the temple. Hello everyone! Welcome to Curse of the Dead Gods! This is the little starting area before you go into any of the temples. Over here we have some starting weapons, the machete and chip dagger, which is my favourite starting um, set that I've ex uh, had at the moment. Uh, over here we've got a stone hammer and a braided whip. The whips are alright, the whips are alright, the stone hammers, the maces are a bit too slow for me, but they do more damage. Um, you can unlock these altars as you get as you get better in the game. As you can see, there's two more spaces over here, which I haven't unlocked yet. So I can have more choices as I get better in the game. Um, this here, uh, this, these blessings are little like um, power-ups you can put on yourselves, and you buy those with crystal skulls that you get throughout your runs. Um, so, so far, at the moment, I've got Clever Kills, which do traps deal 100% more damage to enemies. I use the traps a lot, you, as you'll see. And we've also got Favor of Sichal, which I really want to put on, because I need the gold when we start. Um, but I, uh, I, I, as you can see at the top of the screen, I've only got two slots available. I need that third one, um, because I have Tamox Protection. Fire illuminates further. All damage taken is reduced by 20% while in the light. I'm okay at dodging, but I'm terrible at parrying to the point that I don't even try it. So, um, any, anything that can reduce my damage taken is good for me. I have unlocked this one as well, which I had for a little while. And then, as you can see, I can unlock many more of them. Um, up here, we've got Forsaken Weaponry. So, I, I, as you unlock these weapons, you can find them during your runs in the temples, I, I believe, anyway. So... Without further ado, let's go grab... You, if you don't choose one of these, by the way, you start with your machete and your weebly pistol. Um, but I really like the daggers, because yes, they're short range, obviously, but they do a shit ton of damage. Right, here we are entering the temple. As you can see in this in my run, um, we have already I've already finished the Temple of the Jaguar and the Temple of the Serpent. Might add that I'm pretty sure I did that on my first run as well. So, might go and do that one again, because I enjoyed that. Um, I haven't done the Temple of the Eagle yet. I've attempted it once or twice, um, and I got my ass kicked, basically. But anyway, whenever you go to enter the temples, um, you have this, this screen in front of you. And basically, you can choose what room you enter the temple in, and you can see your path in front of you. Obviously, if we enter on the gold one in the bottom right, uh, sorry, the bottom left, everything that's kind of greyed out, on the right hand side we will not be able to access further into the temple and that happens every time you choose a room so you can kind of plot your way through um, I always like to start with getting gold or with stats um, so I think we go here yeah let's go here and then it gives us a few more options we'll go for the gold so as you saw there we've immediately got 20 corruption placed on us when you get to 100 corruption you get a curse placed upon you and the curses are good and bad. Uh, I'll just quickly go through here. So as you can see, here are our weapons. Oil soaked torch, blah, blah, blah. You can get a, a second weapon, as it were. Usually a two-handed, whether it's a bow or a spear or a, a big hammer thing. These here are slots for artifacts. You collect those as you go through your runs. And they just give you basic power-ups and bonuses and stuff. Like 10% more damage. Down here are your where your curses are placed. Like I say... You can just make out on the bottom right hand corner, there's a little um, gauge that we've got 20 out of 100. 
Um, so, we, like I say, we got corrupted 20, uh, 20 corruption for going into the temple in the first place. When you reach 100, you get a curse and it gets placed on here. And when you get five curses, you die. So, you know, you can lift your curses, I believe, by um, beating the champions, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that one. So, without further ado, let's just get into it. Keeping everything illuminated is a good idea. So, basically, without the illumination, this is what you would see. And you take more damage in the dark as well. So... What I like to do is set a guy on fire. Damn it, missed him. Come on then, you snaky bastard. Yeah! There are traps. Like, I'm not going to set these things. Oh, maybe I will set them off. Oh! Sick! See what I mean? Like, that's what... Having that extra um, trap damage helps because I usually like to set the enemies on fire. Sometimes, by the way, when you are exploring the rooms like this, there are... Oh, look at all that gold. Beautiful gold. There are other bad guys that just haven't heard you fighting, so do be careful. But yeah, like that's why I've got that addition for the um, that extra bonus boost for the traps. Um, because I like to set them off. I, used to, I like to use my torch a lot when I'm fighting to help illuminate things. Um, because light is key. So in most rooms like here, there are little torches. So let's... Ah! I hate these things. I'm going to pretend that I meant to do that, and I definitely did. 15% oh, damage to fire attacks. Yeah, we'll take it for now. Oops. I mean, I knew that was there. I don't know why I just did that. So there are some enemies further in, uh, lower down in this room. So I kind of want to go explore, see what else is in this room. See, yeah, I knew there'd be some. I hate these things. They poison you. Oh, but they also blow up and damage. So if you have played any roguelikes before, then you'll pretty much understand the... Uh, you know, the gist of this game. You get the, you know. So, uh, we can, so this is where the problem is. We've got two different ways to go. We'll go this way. No idea why I'm just choosing it. But that will block you off from the other ones as you just saw. Oh, got some gold. Excellent. Oh, and uh, an artifact. 10% gold offering. Yes, that's what we want. You'll see why in a bit. Uh, should we go for more gold or should we go for the unknown? Uh, that gets me stat boosts quicker. So I kind of want to go for the stat boost, but then I don't really need the healing yet, which the healing would be the next room afterwards, so I'm actually going to go this way. See, tw for, uh, 20 more corruption, so we're at 40. There are enemies in the game that will put extra corruption on you, which can absolutely just go suck it, because I hate them. Oh, I think we've got some sort of fighting room here. Oh. Blow him up. Yeah! No! I got away from that. As you can see, those five little nodes are below our character. You have, like, that's like your... Damn it. That's like your stamina bar. Um, killing blows, I believe, and, like, dodges. Shit. Yeah, killing blows, dodges, and um, parries, I think. Um, sorry, concentrate. <laughs> it's a very fast paced game, this. Yeah, so, fa um, there are certain actions and stuff on your characters that will, um, take. Ah! Fuck off, man. Yeah, there are certain actions that will deplete that node, and there are also, so like, getting a perfect dodge, and I believe a perfect parry. I'm not good with the parrying, so you're not going to see a lot... Oh, forgot about that. So you're not going to see a lot of parrying from me today, because, um, I right, like I said, I'm just not going to... But they restore um, your nodes, I believe. Your stamina nodes. 
Uh, so what we got? So, aha, so here's a little shrine that we can offer. We can either offer blood, which you can see underneath the icon at the top. Uh, that sort of the three squares in like a little upside down triangle. Um, that would add more corruption to us, but obviously the more corruption we give them, the better weapon we get. But you can also offer um, gold, and I could use a favor to reset these if I wasn't particularly happy with them. But to be honest, I'm actually really happy with... I'm not going to grab any of these. If there was a hammer, I'd probably use that because there are breakable walls and stuff. But I don't believe that... Um, just make sure there's no gold. No. I don't believe that spears can break the walls. I took more damage there than I was hoping. Let's go for a relic. If I can help it, I'm going to try and show you guys every room. I just want gold. Right, I can see a trap glowing on the wall. Screw you. <laughs> You were, you're dodging, like I say, you're dodging. I found that you're dodging is your dodging is your friend in this game. I'm sure there are people that play this game that argue that that argue parrying is your best friend. As there are with any, oh shit, as there are with any game. But I have found that dodging is my friend. I've tried the parrying, like the, uh, when you first start the game up. I don't want to go in there because it'll poison me. That, like, gas cloud can actually be set alight to damage enemies. See? No way back there. Like, I think it's quite creative the way that the um, that you can progress through the, the little dungeons, I guess, is what you would we would call them. Oh, I've just dodged that. See, I quite like... Um, I'm really glad I didn't finish that sentence. I was going to say I quite like these snake guys because I think it sort of predict their attacks. And I knew I was going to get hit by one of them when I said it. So I'm kind of glad I didn't finish that sentence. Let's mosey on over to the next section. Dungeon. I don't know what to call them because I suppose they're rooms within... Oh. Damn it. Didn't mean to do that. That started off badly. I pressed the wrong button. Let's just light that torch. Like I say, you do take more damage when you're in uh, when you're in the dark and trust me it's noticeable I need to just recover stamina a bit just in case he tries to like go for me and I can't dodge away you'll see it more in the champions fights which I will bring you these these things are traps and they take off a massive amount of damage so avoid them at all costs uh, torture ring. Heal 3% of max health when an enemy is killed by the environment. See, that's probably really good for me, and I can buy it, so I don't put any extra corruption on us. And it gives us three, two extra dexterity. Which I think dexterity is... I, I can't remember. I think the red one is health, blue one's damage, and the green one is, like, better chance of, like, better loot, basically. Snake Fang, 30% damage to poison attacks. I don't have anything that does poison damage, so there's no point in that one. See, that is good. But I'm going to get more use out of that one. So let's offer the coinage. So that should heal us now. We'll take 20 more corruption when we go through here. Um, so we've done a couple of gold rooms. Uh, I say if we go this way, it shows us every room. So let's go that way. That's probably not the way I would have gone anyway, because I kind of want those stat boosts. But going this way, we get to see a little bit of every room, uh, which will be useful. Um, informative to you guys. Lots of gold. I can see lots of enemies. Now, I know this trap. Did I dodge that? I don't know if I did. Get down, son! Oh, yes. 33% to all healing effects. That's good. I like that. Let's just go straight for it. I'm not messing around. You obviously can take detours. And they do offer, like, better loot drops and stuff like that. And as with any uh, roguelike, you get the general idea. If you've played a roguelike before, then you know what you're in for. I like the aesthetic of this one though, I like the whole Aztec temple kind of thing, the fact that you're in the dark. Ah, I didn't see the second, I didn't see the double trap. Bastards. Yeah, the fact that you're in the dark and obviously you do more damage, uh, you, you take more damage in the dark. 
I think it's just really creative. And if you haven't picked up this game, I properly recommend it. And maybe you've just got into the roguelike genre, you know, because you're playing Hades or something popular like ah, something popular like that. Ah, no, get out of the dark, damn it. Uh oh. See there, I wasn't keeping an eye on my stamina, and I... That was silly. I've taken way too much damage in this room now. Oh, did I get away from that poison? I don't think I did. Shit. Obviously, as it says with the name, it keeps poisoning you. I mean, that's if you played a video game, any kind of video game... Oh, that's good as well. If you played... I like anything that um, offers gold or... Like health benefits. So we'll go to the unknown room. See what that's all about. Show you guys. Have we just got our first curse? I believe we have. Uh, curse of the dead gods. Wrong. But anyway, re regular enemies summon a vermin upon death. That's horrible. I don't like that. So basically, I've got more things to kill. But I suppose that's more chance for us to heal. Is that right? Oh no, it's when they're killed by the environment. Damn it! I hope this doesn't extend to the boss, by the way. Can you imagine if the boss, like, starts sending out loads of little grubs? Damn it, I thought that was enough then. Yeah! Suck it! Oh, okay. I'm not painting myself in massive amounts of glory, but I am getting a lot of gold, which... Who doesn't like that dollar dollar? Bit of moolah. So we can go across there or we can wander through here. I'm going to go across there. See what's here. There's no right way. There's no wrong way from what I've seen. Oh. Oh, there's a big guy. Come on, blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up. Yes. Damn it. He poisoned me. I was trying to get the kill on him. No. No. Oh, God, I'm not doing well on this one. Right, you. Oh, I didn't... I forgot that you were there. No! I'm doing so badly on this run. These little grubs are not helping. That has to have killed you. That did. I kind of want to show you the healing room. In fact, I'm going to show you the healing room because I also need to heal anywhere. So that's worked out. Upgrade to the weapon, I'm pretty sure you can imagine what that is. You know, it's just a percentage upcrease. Uh, increase? Upcrease? Um, the healing rooms, nothing to fear. But every time you want to heal, you have to offer them corruption. So, you'll see my corruption meter go up as, my, as I heal. But with that, um, with that, 33% to all healing effects, it should stack on this. So I shouldn't have to offer them too much corruption. You do get um, amulets and upgrades and all that sort of stuff that give you more max health, which is good. Let's go for the attributes one. Try and get some more damage before we try and take on the champion, which I do really want to show you guys um, in this run, so I might skip ahead. So this will be our upgrades for our attributes, so we can get extra damage, extra treasures, or extra damage and extra treasures. We've only got like two rooms left. So is the damage really worth it? Uh, the damage is worth it. Is the treasure worth it? Fuck it, let's just go for this. Let's offer some gold, because I can. That's the whole reason that I've got the gold. Um, means I don't have to offer any corruption. There is a curse as well. Um, let's go for the weapon. There is a curse as well that like changes it so that you offer health instead of corruption. There's also a curse that stops all corruption as you um, enter rooms, so you don't get your 20%, but it's active, like your corruption never stops producing. Yeah! Yes. So, I think... I haven't paid too much attention yet to whether uh, I want to kill this so Damn it. There we go. Blow him up. Beautiful. You're not beautiful. You're terrifying. Go away. I'm just using these group. Ah, no! Damn it. Just using these. Obviously, the big tanky guys do more damage. 
Like I say, if you played a video game before, I'm pretty sure you get the general gist of it. So if that area of effect spell had got me, uh, with it being like purple, like everything's colour coded in this game. Kill him with a dagger. Yeah. Oh no, I forget about the grubs every time. Everything's colour coded, so like the green area effect gives you poison, the red one burns you, the purple one gives you corruption. So like I say, there are actual enemies that just pour corruption, extra corruption onto you, which is infuriating. Uh, Two-handed spear. A swift bow. Oh, let's go for the bow. Oh, is that sword better than mine? It is. Finishers cost no stamina. 20% of chance of inflicting lightning damage. Restore 1% of max health for each enemy killed. I'm going to have to go for that one, I think. But I could get that one without... If I go for that one, I get a curse. In fact, we're going through another door, so I'm going to get a curse anyway. Or I could give the gold and get that one. 30% damage against poisoned enemies. I can't poison them though. Damage whilst in the darkness. That does a lot more damage. I'm going to go for that one. Look, we're going to take another curse, which sucks, but we would have taken one for going through the door anyway. And there's our old weapon. So we should have a more boss weapon now, and we are heading for Le Champion. Le Campion! Dark mysteries. Other curses are unknown as long as this one is not lifted. Does that just mean that I can't tell what my other curses are? Like if I go, go on here, will it just not tell me? Okay, so that's, that's not too bad. There are, I've had much worse. Right, come on then. You're a horrible beastie. I hate her. I've just realized like which, which one she was. Does an attack. Oh, that was close. I'm not good. This is. I'm warning you now. This is not going to be. Um, there's no. There's not going to be any finesse in this at all. Damn it. Oh my god, that was horrible. Ah! Jesus. Oh my god. So when I beat a. Uh, the first time, it was simply I just outlasted her in terms of life. And I feel like that's my tactic for this one. Ah! Damn it. So I, I've, I think I've already taken enough corruption in this fight to give us another curse anyway. Oh my god. Right, there's no skill to this. I'm just going to wail on her until we hopefully outlast her. Ah, can we do it? Oh my god. I've definitely taken enough corruption now to give me... I've definitely taken enough corruption now to just... Oh my god! I'm not going to do this. I've got 8 health left. No! Well, look, that was my own fault for not going into that with a strategy. That was being stupid then. 944 she did to me. <coughs> Sorry. Z Zucat the Witch. If we'd have beaten her, we'd have gotten a shitload of Crystal Skulls and a load of Jade Rings. It's really annoying that we didn't. Um, but that's a roguelike for you. So, as you see, we just go back to the start, as it were. Yeah, we know about curses. I've explained it. What have we got here? So, this time we got Blunt Claws and a Chip Dagger. That's not bad. I don't mind the claws, actually. Um, throwing knives and a worn shield. Probably the worst combination for me, seeing as how I don't parry. Um, but anyway, as you can see, it, up it refreshes it every time uh, that you get brought back. It's a shame that we couldn't be... Um, I've already forgotten the name. The Witch. Zucat the Witch. But, hey -ho, you get the general idea. So that was me playing a little bit of Curse of the Dead Gods. Uh, I hope I've managed to explain everything to you and showed you how fun it is. Um, there are quite a few unique mechanics in this that set it apart from other roguelikes obviously that obviously the roguelike genre has exploded with the popularity of Hades so if you are looking for other titles then I would totally recommend this one for you um, if you do want to pick it up then if you go down below I'll link the Steam page in the description below but anyway if you've enjoyed it then please like and subscribe um, I will like I'm going to be bringing you more and more different kinds of indie games over the coming months as that's what I want to focus on on this channel. So thank you very much for watching, take care and until next time.
Goodbye.